Hi YouTube, Watchify here with another video. So today I've got a double unboxing. I don't think I've ever done one of these. Uh, both of these watches were ordered at different times, but they just happened to arrive on the same day. <clears throat> so I'm eager to get them open, but first I wanted to film it. So I'm gonna open this one first. So this is going to be a G-Shock. I just did a video on Casio watches, kind of a brief history. <clears throat> so this model is the GAB 2100 2A. Uh, so basically I had a GA 2100, the all black one. And uh, I liked it, but I sold it recently because, I mean, I have other watches that look similar to it. And these came out a while back. These are the ones where everything is looks the same, more or less, but they have Bluetooth and solar. So I thought that was cool. This one is it's the dark dark blue one. It's dark blue case. And uh, dark blue strap. That's cool. And the black dial with gray. It looks like it's gray accents. From what I understand, this is uh, basically the same dimensions, but maybe a little bit, tiny bit thicker. It has a different module inside. So module 5689. So I understand the G-Shop G-Shock connected app is not going to work for this model. For some reason, uh, there's another Casio app that you have to use to change the settings on this watch. So I already installed it on my phone and I will add this watch to it later. There isn't much to say. This is a, a really well-known watch. I think it came out in late 2019 or early 2020. Uh, but yeah, like I said, those models were just basic uh, quartz, no Bluetooth or multiband 6 or solar. So this one is actually pretty cool because it has those, those two features, the solar and Bluetooth. There is a difference in the sub-dial. So on the old watch, well actually I'm wearing one of the older models. The sub-dial just shows the days of the week. Here I think it's showing the battery level. And I can't tell what, what else is on there. It's got a negative display. Loom on the hands only. I also like how the uh, the wording is filled in, in black and not white. So legibility is not the greatest, but uh, I do like the color. I think it'll still go with a lot of things. And this has a stainless keeper. Says Casio China there. Carbon core guard made in China. 
I think that's what it says. So yeah, that's the first watch. Second watch, this was a watch I had known about, but um, I hadn't considered buying because I felt the price was a little too high for what you were getting. Um, but I guess recently the US dollar has been pretty strong uh, overseas and I guess that's causing the prices of a lot of items <clears throat> that you purchase um, to go down so I'll talk about that more in a second let me just get the watch out Probably guessed by now this is a Seiko. The model is SBDC 159. Oh, and this is nice. There's actually they actually give you the manual here because lately they have been, uh, Seiko hasn't been including the manuals. They've just been directing you to their website to download it from there. And I know a lot of people don't really like that. So this box is nice. This is the the Japanese model of the, I guess they call it the reinterpretation of the original Alpinist. This is the one with the blue dial. And it's not just a blue dial, it's got a pattern on it that really appealed to me. Sort of like a, kind of looks like a knitted vertical knitting or something, but it's hard to describe, but I think it looks really cool. Probably something that no one is ever going to notice unless you come across another Seiko collector. But it's 38, I think 38.5 millimeters. So I like the size. Here's the tag. It has a, um, the international model is, starts with SPB. I'll put the name on the screen. I can't remember it off the top of my head. This has the 6R35 movement, 70 hour power reserve. I'm gonna take this off the pillow. Comes on a metal bracelet, of course, and um, I actually prefer metal bracelets. There we go. So I'm familiar with this type of clasp. It's um, going to only have two micro adjustment holes, double push button, 
this section is, um, I guess it's milled and the top looks like it's pressed metal, but it, it still looks nice. Got polishing on the side and a brush finish on the top. It has solid end links, which is nice. See-through case back. Let's see. 6R35. Not really decorated other than that uh, vertical brushing on the rotor. 7 so this one says made in Japan, which is always nice. Water resistant to 200 meters. So I guess this is um I guess this would be considered a sports watch and when I do the full review video on it, I want to wear it for a while. I'll size the bracelet and wear it for a while and then do a full review video, but <clears throat> what I can tell you is that to me, this looks sort of like a dress watch. This doesn't remind me of a sport watch, even though it has a screw down crown and it's got 200 meters of water resistance. When you look at this, it kind of, it's hard to to really say that it doesn't look dressy. I mean, there's, there's some brushing on the side, polishing on the top of the lugs, polishing in between. Let's see here. Top of the bezel is polished. So <clears throat> there isn't any 24 hour markers or mark numerals on the dial. It's just got, I think the difference or the one thing that makes this stand out is it has the, I guess it's supposed to be like mountain shapes, but I mean, essentially it's just a triangle. They've got that at 12, nine and six. The one at 12 is got, it's, um, I guess it's um, divided differently than the other ones. The other thing that's really cool about this watch that I liked is that seconds hand, it looks like it's uh, rose gold. So that, that was something I really liked as well. Light Seiko logo. It's got a framed uh, date window. It's done in white, I guess, to keep the, the symmetry. And there's a very small indice right there between the case and the date window. These are gonna be, and the other reason why I say this, this watch kind of is more looks more like a dress watch than a sports watch is the hands that they're using. They're dauphine shaped. They remind me a lot of the hands on the Saab 033. Well, I guess the Saab 033 is also kind of considered a sports watch too. I think Seiko is doing some really good work on the dials. And this is just, uh, this model is just another example of that. <clears throat> it's interesting that the, I guess the minute marks are in the inner part of the dial instead of normally it's on the outer edge of the dial. The crown is not signed. It seems like an appropriate size. The other thing is um, the loom is supposed to be blue loom. So I like that as well. Bracelet is, uh, looks to be good quality. It's done in an oyster style. 
it's got some polishing ele or polished elements at the bottom and top of the links, which I like. I like it when they do that. It's got female end links, which is nice. Yeah. So I'm going to put this on wrist real quick. Let's kind of show you how that looks. On wrist, I have a six and three quarter inch wrist. So yeah, I think this looks really cool. I should have brought, brought my calipers, but uh, I'll put the dimensions on the screen. So yeah, really nice. Really nice. I think it'll be a versatile watch, but like I said, it comes across as more dressy to me. And I'm going to put the, the G-Shock on wrist real quick. Oh, I'll put the price on the screen for what I paid for both of these watches. I think I got a pretty good deal on both of them. The, this one especially, because um, going back to the uh, strength of the dollar, this watch I believe retails for $700 is the retail price. But uh, I saw it on Sakura's website for well below $500. And I think it's even lower than that. I think last time I checked it was $430 something dollars. So that's an incredible price for this watch with the 6R35 movement. What you're getting here, that's a great price. I thought. So I was on the fence. Once I saw the price, I went ahead and, and went for it. This one I got from Amazon. And actually these retail for $150, I think. But uh, there was a seller there who was selling this for $129, so basically $20 off. So I thought that was a good deal. Decided to pick it up, add it to the collection. I'm selling one of my series, the Seiko Seri 057. I have that one up for sale on eBay. Because I try to, if I'm gonna buy a watch, I try to sell, also sell a watch. So yeah, I think this looks really good. Can't wait to wear this one also. <clears throat> That's pretty much it for the video. I'm gonna do a loom shot, give you guys a quick loom shot before I go. So here it is. I'm glad Seiko decided to use blue loom instead of green like they normally do. You can see how the color differs from the G-Shocks loom. Later I put the watch on my time grapher just to see what the health of the movement was. And unfortunately, I have one of those movements, and I know I've heard some complaints about Seiko regarding this, where it gives you a totally different reading depending on the position of the watch. So dial up, it's about 26 seconds fast. 12 o'clock down, looks like it's losing about six or seven seconds. And with crown up, it's gaining a few seconds. So that type of variation makes it tough to regulate the watch. But I'm gonna wear it and, and see uh, what the accuracy is actually on wrist. That's gonna wrap up this video. As always, hopefully you found it helpful or interesting. If you did, feel free to leave a like, comment, or consider subscribing. I wanted to thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in another video.